Welcome to Health Coach for Women. Intentional living for more happiness and fulfillment in your everyday life with your host, Marsha Rupchand Walker. Join Marsha as she shares her own personal wellness journey, as well as stories from our guests that will enlighten and inspire you to move towards better health and happiness. Now, here's your host, Marsha Rupchand Walker. Hello and welcome to another episode of Health Coach for Women, a podcast where we explore alternative and holistic solutions for better health and wellness. And I am your host, Marsha. Now, before we get started, please go ahead and hit that like button, share and subscribe. Of course, today I have a simple quote for you, and that is to simply don't live to eat, but eat to live. Not sure who it's by but it's pretty simple. So that's what I'll be talking to you today about, eating well at 40 and beyond, fast and nutritious meals that you can incorporate into your life. So of course, I am a woman over 40. I'm in my 50s and no shame in my game. (laughs) No shame to say that, right? Um, But I want to talk about that, right? As we get older, things just aren't the same as they were in their 20s, right? We know our metabolism slows down and things aren't like how they were in their 20s, right? For some, for many people, right? So that's what I want to talk about today. So what are some of the things that we can do and why is it important? It's important for those some of those reasons reasons that I mentioned above, right? Uh, that I mentioned about uh, metabolism and our hormonal changes that we experience, right? We experience hormonal changes and they tend to slow down and produce less, right? And so that is why we need to uh, be able to incorporate these healthy meals, quick and healthy meals, even though we may be still busy, right? In our busy lives, maybe still working, still doing things that we need to do to keep because life keeps moving, right? So our bone health, we need to protect our bone health, right? Uh, at, for women over 50, there's an increase in osteoporosis, right? For women over 50, uh, especially again, that's especially if we, we lack in vitamin D. And, I, and you know, I'm always going to talk about that because that's something I experienced firsthand, right? Was my uh, lack of vitamin D that I experienced that impacted my mood, my joints, um, my behavior, cramps, right? Uh, joints, uh, foot, leg cramps, um, things of that nature. So I'll, uh, you'll hear me talk about vitamin D a lot. So it's important that we get that. But what about weight management? Our weight, right? We tend to, it's harder to lose weight as we age, as we get older. It may be harder to lose weight. So these are some of the things that's why it's important. Again, we also experience digestive problems, right? Uh, we, some things we can't eat the things that we used to eat, right? Um, you know, some of the things that I used to like, uh, like plums, I don't eat, I stopped eating plums a long time ago. For some reason, it just gives me a nauseous feeling. I don't know why, but I no longer eat plums and I stopped eating that long, a long time ago. So, and, and I have a friend who used to could eat bananas. She can't eat bananas anymore. Her throat clogs up, tightens up. She can't eat them. So things change as we get older, right? Cognitive function is another thing why we need to incorporate having uh, nutritious meals uh, even though we have a busy schedule, right? We can't neglect that. That's important. So uh, of course, a diet rich in omega-3s uh, is important along with those anti antioxidants that we need and uh, to increase our vitamin uh, energy levels uh, and such as B12 also helps with cognition. You've heard me say that before. So we need to find some ways during this busy t- time that we have where we can still incorporate uh, time to eat healthy meals. Skin health is also important. That's another factor. Uh, having those nutrients that's containing vitamin A, 
A, vitamin C, vitamin E that we can get from our fruits and vegetables, right? Um, but we want to also make sure that we are have a well-balanced diet to help with our immune system, right? That's important, our immune system. What about chronic diseases, right? And so if we eat a balanced, nutrient-rich diet, we can reduce uh, the chances, lower our risk in developing chronic diseases, right? Such as type 2 diabetes and cancers and hypertension and so on. And protecting our gut microbiome, that's also important, right? Protecting our gut microbiome, that's important. You've heard me talk about prebiotics and probiotics. These things are important. And what's some of the things that helps with the gut microbiome, right? Some of the things that I mentioned, sauerkraut, right? Pickles, you know, or fermented foods, right? And so this is what I, this is what I wanted to share with you about why we should incorporate these uh, quick meals, quick healthy meals um, for people, for women like me and like you over 40. So what is another thing uh, that we need to do? We can incorporate time-saving uh, kitchen hacks, right? We can incorporate time-saving kitchen hacks. And some of those things are things such as meal prepping, right? So what we need to do is making time for meal prepping. So according to your own schedule, everyone don't work, everyone does not work a simple nine to five. Some people work second shift, some people work night shift. So according to your uh, work schedule, you would incorporate uh, making time to do meal prep, right? And so whether it's doing your meal prepping on a weekend, such as chopping up vegetables or, 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 or you're cooking your grains, um, you need to be able to make sure that you allot time for that because it would help you uh, overall in saving in time management with your time management skills. So you can use things like a slow cooker, right? A slow cooker is very helpful because the thing about that, it, it, it pretty much does the work itself. So you, you set it and forget it, so to speak, right? So using uh, a slow cooker is helpful. Now, when it comes to, I want to talk about fruits and vegetables. Now, when it talks about fruits, when I'm talking about fruits and veg vegetables, don't shy away from frozen fruits and vegetables. And the reason why I say don't shy away from fruits and vegetables, because sometimes you may, especially if you're someone who is pressed for a lot of time or you have a busy work schedule, you you, you just have this busy life. You may not have time to uh, get uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, right? And cook them within a certain amount of time, because you know, when you buy the fresh produce, you have to use it within a certain amount of time. So if you know for sure that you're not going to cook those fresh, uh, use those fresh fruits and vegetables within a, a matter of days that it'll, it'll, it's going to go bad, right? Uh, if it's, if it's fresh and organic, it, it's going to go bad. So don't shy away from frozen fruits and vegetables. Frozen uh, fruits make great for smoothies, Right, you can make your smoothies. You can prep those in advance, have those, and then they'll be ready. They'll be available for you when you're ready for them. You can make your smoothie the night before if you want to take it for uh, maybe breakfast along with breakfast, or or take it like for lunch. Right, so it just depends on you and your personal choice and preferences, preferences, and what you like. Um, so you want to start by having a plan, right? You want to start by having a plan making your list, right? I already covered about the fruits and vegetables, you, the choice of whether you should go uh, with fresh fruit or frozen fruits, it's totally up to the, up to you. They still have frozen organic fruits that's, in the, that's frozen, fruits and vegetables. So again, the choice is yours. You know your time schedule and, and what your work life is, your work life and balance schedule is all about. So adjust it in a lot time accordingly. All right. And you can pre-make your sauces and your salad dressings. You can pre-make those uh, and have them read readily available when, when, when needed. Now, some great breakfast ideas. If you're, if you're busy and if you're one that eat breakfast, you know, I used to eat breakfast and, and I 
breakfast for me was the most important part of the day. But for some reason now lately, I don't need to eat breakfast anymore. So I basically do the 12-7, which I don't eat until about 12, uh, about 12 noon, sometimes maybe around 11.30 if I'm hungry. Um, so I eat around 12 and then I have dinner no later than seven. So I do the 12, seven type of, um, uh, eating habit for me, right? That's what works for me. So you find what works for you, right? Um, so if you're having, if you're going to have breakfast, you want to make sure, um, that you're having something that's going to not be overly heavy, but something that will sustain you. So something like oats, if you like oats and putting some fresh blueberries in your in your oatmeal is great. You don't want to use the oatmeal that have the added sugars. You want to invo- avoid those instant uh, pre-packed ones um, that have those added sugars and preservatives. You don't want to use those. Just, you can still use the plain oatmeal uh, that, that cooks within, what is it? cooks within a minute or two or whatever it is, you can use that and you can add your your toppings such as your your nuts or or your granola or, or your uh, f- uh, blueberries, strawberries, whatever you want to add to it, right? You add that. I already talked about having your smoothie, right? Making your smoothie. You may not have time in the morning to do those things, but what you can do is when you set your meal prep time and getting your things ready, you may want to blend a couple of smoothies and then have them readily available that you know you're going to use within the next two, two or two or three days or so, right? And having those ready because in the morning you don't have time for that. In the morning, it's you're getting up, you're getting ready, you're doing whatever your routine is, you're getting ready for work. So you want to, if you're on, if you're that on the go person and you're, you're pressed for time, you want to have your smoothies available, uh, already ready in your mug, ready to go, grab and go, right? But you can still make time if if you like to eat and you want to eat light in the morning, avocado toast, avocado toast. It has the healthy fat and you still have your, your slice of bread. You have some carbs. You can have one slice, you know, one slice with your avocado and maybe even a boiled egg that will sustain you pretty much for a while, depending on, you know, that can sustain you. I know for me, I can eat that and I don't have to eat anything again until probably dinner or somewhere in between. I may have a light snack. So again, it's knowing your body, knowing how you're, what, what feels right for you and you're eating when you're hungry, right? Eating when you're hungry, uh, but not overindulging. Okay. So nut butter, right? Like nut butter, you can use uh, almond butter, uh, or nut butter and, and have a sandwich that way. You can m- make a nice peanut butter uh, sandwich if you can uh, and 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 take that and have that on the go, right? And so chia pudding, chia pudding is another one. You can set your chia and, and, and have your chia s- set overnight before. So it gives it time for it to uh, expand, right? You have your chia pudding. So just know what you like, right? Know what you like and know what you want. And have these things and prep it accordingly. If you, you know, according, again, according to your own work schedule, you'll meal prep, take the time out that certain day and do a couple of meals uh, and have them prepped and ready, right? And so some people will cook a meal, uh, do two dinners, right? Or two meals. I'll just say two meals because it can be whenever. Do two meals, meals that'll last a few days, two to four days, right? And I know some people like, different meals every day. Again, it's all up to you. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. It's all on what you like and what you prefer. All right. And so the next thing I want to talk about is mindful eating and portion control. I did touch on that lightly before, right? And so learn how to do some mindful uh, practices, right? And, And that's by eating when you're hungry, right? Never overindulge. When you overindulge, uh, you overeat, then you feel less energetic. You're not in the mood to do anything. And so you you definitely want to, you don't want to be sluggish 
uh, when you're headed to work. You don't want to feel like that habit. You want, in the, especially in the morning time, if you're going to work, or even if you, if even if you're someone at work night shift, you don't want to eat heavy right before you go into work. You don't at that point. You don't. You have no energy. You don't feel like it until that time when that food is wearing off on you. You know, you don't. You don't want to do that. So you eat until satisfied, right? Not until you're f- overeating you where you're full and you and you can't even move. <laughs> so you need to do that, right? Manage your portion sizes. Now, okay, so batch cooking. Batch cooking is what I mentioned before about having batch meals, different, you can ha- cook, let's say today I want to prepare maybe two dinners. And so I will go ahead and have at that time, I'm already having my things, my meal plan, my meal uh, planning already set of what I'm going to do, whatever my vegetables or whatever it is I'm going to have. It's already ready. And so if it and if you're doing your meats, you want to season your meat, you want to try to get them seasoned maybe the day before. And that way the meat, the, the the seasoning and the flavor is in the meat, right? So you want to do that the day before. And so the next day you will go ahead and prepare your meal, right? So it, it just depends on what it is, what you're eating and knowing and allotting the time for that. All right. So that's important. Now, Another thing I want to talk to you about is also mention. Remember going to your remember going to your local farmers market. Depending on the season, now if you're somewhere in, uh, like me that have the four seasons, you have to know when to get uh, when when certain fruits and vegetables when they're in season and things like that, and when and when to pick it out and and when to you know uh, the best time to uh, purchase those things. Um, because some sometimes as there's less of those things that's in certain fruits or vegetables in demand don't, due to the season, of course, it's going to be higher, right? It'll be higher. So when there's, more, when there's less of a product, more of a de- demand for it, it increases the prices, okay? All right, so now let me move on here. Let me, t- I wanna discuss some meals, some meals that you can have that's pretty quick that you can make. According to Globenewswire.com, an estimated 128,000 health coaches and health educators advise and motivate clients to change bad lifestyle habits and to manage chronic conditions such as diabetes. Consumers, employers, and insurers are each now more seriously focused on improving health and being proactive. Insurance companies, doctors, and patients themselves see the critical need and demand for health coaches as well as other integrative natural health practitioners. There is no doubt with the use of health coaches being a crucial part of the healthcare team brings added value to the client, patient, and the healthcare system overall. At Health Coach for Women, our mission to get clients to optimal health at the cellular level. We help clients manage their chronic pain, fatigue, insomnia, depression, anxiety, brain fog, diabetes, and gut health with three simple protocols. Once you become a client at HC4W, we take a simple test and assessment to determine a plan of action towards wellness. Schedule a call by going to healthcoachforwomen.com. You can you can uh, throw a salad together in no time, right? Because that's not that doesn't even involve cooking, right? Unless you're you're adding meats to it, right? Unless you're adding some type of meat to it. Um, but if you're having a plain old salad, that takes no time at all. All right. And so again, based on your preferences, I always recommend using uh, the romaine lettuce, not iceberg lettuce, of course, because it has no nutritional value. Right. So having your lettuce, your plum tomatoes or great tomatoes, those are better. Right. Again, but your preference. Right. Because you're free to choose. Right. Fresh organic tomatoes. If you can, you want to find uh, organic produce as possible if you can, if you're able to. All right. So, and you can um, make your salads, however you choose to prepare it and and make your, your salad. Uh, as far as, uh, sauteing your vegetables, right? Spinach. I love spinach. You can saute your vegetables. You know, you should not use, be using vegetable oil, right? You know that you should be avoiding those type of hydrogenated oils because they're bad for you, right? And so you can use coconut oil to saute. It's great for sauteing. Remember that's coconut oil is not for high heat cooking. 
right? It's for low to medium cooking. So there's nothing wrong with coconut oil, using it for sauteing. It's great for that. Or avocado oil, right? Or even uh, olive oil. Nothing wrong with that either. Or grapeseed oil. So you, you have a variety of choices, right? And just go with what you feel is best for you. But the vegetable oils, uh, certain oils, you already know that you need to stay away from the canola oil, things of that nature, right? Okay, so quick meals that you can make uh, or even chickpeas, chickpeas, bean salad, uh, quinoa. So if you, if you want to cut back on the white rice, uh, instead of using white rice, you can use quinoa. Um, you can use, you can, uh, use, uh, uh, lentils. Like for those who don't eat meat, making your meatloaf, you can use lentils to prepare a nice meat, uh, lentil loaf, I would say, right. A lentil loaf, uh, and, and, and just knowing what, what's best for you. Right. And, and if you're going to eat fish, you know, the types of fish, salmon, mackerel, tuna, those things are good for you. Uh, it, it has the fish oil, the omegas that we need, right? Um, avocado has the, the good fat um, that is good for us, healthy, it's good for your skin. Also avocado, uh, add that to your salad as well. My, there's so many things you can do. Learn how to color your plate. Learn how to color your plate. And we 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 make time for so many other things, right? But we all because we have the things that we have to do, right? We have to go to work or we have to do this, we have to run our business, we have to do that. But we need to make time and prioritize what matters most is health, right? What matters most is health. And so what we eat matters, right? Don't forget what we eat does matter. So be mindful of what you're putting in your mouth. Be mindful of that. Okay. So again, avoiding refined sugars, avoiding those things, uh, pop, uh, the sodas, drinks, those things, uh, avoiding those processed meats. You know, sometimes you may want to, uh, maybe you want to take, maybe you may have a sandwich, right? You want to have something like that. Um, but you really want to avoid those, uh, processed meats, because some of them are loaded with nitrates, uh, which is uh, unhealthy, which is not good for you and contains a lot of sodium. So the frozen foods, you want to pay attention to the sodium content, pay attention to the preservatives. If you're doing something with uh, frozen foods, I say the best way is to just make your own food, right? Make your own food. And we can, it's, it's not that we don't have the time for, it. we just need to prioritize and get a schedule put together of, of how, what schedule and time works for us that we can do this, right? Where you can make some quick, simple, easy, healthy meals, right? Even um, the, the the pasta salads, those are great. You know, the only thing you're, you're boiling is the, the pasta itself, right? You want to go with gluten-free pasta, right? If, if possible, find the gluten-free pasta, if you're concerned about weight or have some type of uh, uh, allergy uh, uh, towards gluten. So um, that is basically all that I wanted to cover. I also forgot to mention about hydration. I wanted to mention that. I knew it was something else. Hydration, right? We need to stay hydrated. And the best way we can do that is having our water, drinking several cups of water a day, uh, making sure if and if we can avoid coffee, um, not saying that you don't have to drink it. I drink coffee every now and then, right? Is, I'm not saying that I don't drink coffee, um, but we want to make sure that we uh, be mindful of how much coffee we're taking in, okay? But incorporating having your green teas, like I have my green tea uh, daily, my green tea with my turmeric, uh, and I add my black pepper uh, to my green tea. And sometimes I'll even uh, mix it with a, a ginger turmeric tea bag and a green tea bag and, add, and still add my uh, turmeric, my black pepper, and a little, bit of, a little bit of coconut oil in there. And I drink it. And it, it, helps, it helps with inflammation as well as brain health, right? So 
whatever your prefer- preference is, uh, do that. Making sure that you have stay hydrated, right? And you know that coffee dehydrates you, right? So if you're gonna if you're a coffee drinker, you want to try and make sure that you the first thing you do you want to do is have some water first before you take in coffee because coffee dehydrates you, okay? And coconut water, right? Try some coconut, this organic coconut water with pineapple. Oh my goodness, it's delicious, right? Try some coconut water and it's very alkaline. Have that water by itself. You know, you can just drink water. You can make your your smoothies. I talked about that. You can try making your smoothies using coconut water. And you can just have coconut water and add some blueberries, right? So again, it's all about just making those choices and and trying to getting as much of good, healthy food uh, foods as possible. You know, uh, one good way to that you can uh, stay focused uh, on eating healthy and keeping you to remember like what to eat is thinking about coloring your plate. Think of the rainbow, right? Think of the rainbow. The rainbow is full of colors. That's how we want to look at our plate by coloring our plate. Uh, coloring our plate would plant greens, uh, salads, vegetables, uh, Kale, spinach, cucumbers, uh, plum tomatoes, grape tomatoes, uh, there's so many different things, avocados. We want to just color our plate as much as we can. Okay. And so that is all I have for you for now. Uh, if there's any questions or any concerns, anything that you would like to reach out to me for, for, on the just for just a piece of advice or any, just reach out to me. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, not so much, but I'm on Instagram. I'm I'm also on LinkedIn. Hey, you can hit me up. I'm sure I'll be sure to get back to you. I don't mind uh, sharing what I know. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for watching my or listening to my podcast. Thank you. I'm grateful. And I'm grateful for, even if I have one follower, I'm grateful, right? I'm grateful for that because it it lets me know at least somebody is listening. I'm appreciative. And so if you take anything from what you've learned from me or any information that you've gotten from me, because I'm here to share, I'm here to share. And and that's my, that's my goal, right? Is to be of service to you. Um, Anything that you've gotten from me. I appreciate it. Implement it. You know, let's take care of ourselves. Our body is our temple, right? Let's take care and nourish our bodies, right? As well as keeping our minds together, right? As well as keeping our mind and our spirit together, our soul. It's keeping our soul together too, right? Because you know that there's spiritual warfare going on. That's another topic. I've talked about that before. You know, we can't let things infiltrate and try to attack our spirit, right? Uh, And try to get at us. But when you are armored up in prayer, if you are a believer, uh, if you are armored up in prayer, you are untouchable, right? Remember that you're untouchable. All right. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to Health Coach for Women with your host, Marsha Rupchan Walker. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to rate, subscribe, and review on your preferred podcast listening platform. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.